Dear brothers and sisters, I begin with a dua that we should be making frequently in these days. Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqa wa rzuqna attiba'ah wa arina al-baatila baatila wa rzuqna attinaba. O Allah, we ask you to show us the truth as truth and then to enable us to follow that truth. And we ask you to show us evil as evil and then enable us to avoid that evil. Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqa wa rzuqna attiba'ah wa arina al-baatila baatila wa rzuqna attinaba. Before I get into the subject of today, I want us to take a step back and to first and foremost start from the basic premise that as Muslims, one of the things that makes us unique is that we submit our entire existence to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in that process, we submit our hearts and our minds, we submit our emotions and our intellect. And in that is an inherent humility that we might get things wrong and that we want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to lead us to what's right and that we commit ourselves to doing what's right once what's right has been made clear to us. There is submission. There's humility, especially when things become further unclear, especially when difficulty becomes so much that it can cloud our senses. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions to us that shall I not tell you about al-akhsarina a'mala, not those who have lost an election, not those who have lost a race, not those who have lost a position, but those who have lost their good deeds. Shall I not tell you about those who have lost their good deeds? It is not those who fail to exert themselves. It's those who exerted themselves in wrong while being sure that they were right. And so I start from that place of humility for all of us, not just in regards to the current climate, but in regards to every climate that we have. And now to the elections and to what's ahead of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to what's right. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use us in ways that are pleasing to him. Allahumma ameen. It's not the first time that I'm speaking about this election or what it means or how we should move. So I'm not going to be able to say everything in this khutbah. But I do want to share some things that are heavy on the heart. First and foremost, how many people realistically have you seen change their minds in the last four months? in the course of your discussions, your WhatsApp groups, your conversations online, your conversations at your dinner table, how many people have actually changed their minds? And if you're being honest with yourself, then if you're lucky, maybe it's one or two. And so to say that people have their mindset is probably true for the vast majority of Muslims as it is true for the vast majority of Americans. And that the rest of this is a circus that plays out and unfortunately takes a lot of people along the way and we accumulate many sins in that process. Number two, even if you've seen someone change their minds, when's the last time you saw someone change their mind when you called them a naive idiot or a soulless sellout? When you insulted them into changing their minds? It doesn't happen. Not online, not in real life. You don't walk through the masjid doors and say, who are you voting for? I'm voting for this person. You're this, you're this, you're that. I think you're right. I'm going to vote like you now. It doesn't happen like that in real life. So let's deal with the reality that we have right now. It's too late for me to try to change your mind on anything, but I hope bidnillahi ta'ala at least something for the hearts in this last Jum'ah. Ah. And so what I want us to do first and foremost, because it is Jum'ah, Ah, is to go back to our du'as. What are the du'as that we should be making in these times? We have the du'a for guidance. We have the du'as that we are to be making against our enemies. And let's be clear, we have a clear enemy and we should be making dua against that clear enemy. And I want to share with you two. One of them from Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. He says, and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kana yad'u biha ula'il karimat that the Prophet sallallahu would frequently make dua with the following words. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min ghalabat al-dayni wa ghalabat al-adu wa shamatat al-a'da. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min ghalabat al-dayni the Prophet وسلم, say, would say, O oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from being overwhelmed by debt, from being overpowered by my enemy, and from their gloating at my misfortune. It's the first dua. The second dua 
is a dua that Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu also reports as being a frequent supplication of our Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يتعوذ من جهد البلاء ودرك الشقاء وسوء القضاء وشماتة الأعداء. He said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would frequently seek refuge from four things. Number one, جهد البلاء from the severity of trials. May Allah protect us from the severity of trials. The types of trials that overwhelm our senses so that we can't even see right and wrong anymore. And the Prophet ﷺ would seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from darak shaqa from being met with deprivation. And the greatest deprivation is the deprivation of faith, not the deprivation of anything else. The deprivation of faith. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala writes down upon you, this person is shaqi, deprived of good, because of their insistence upon taking a path of evil. And the Prophet ﷺ would seek refuge in Allah from su'il qada, from the difficulty, from being met with an evil decree. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from an evil decree. And the Prophet ﷺ would seek refuge in Allah from the gloating of our enemies. When our enemies see us struggling, when they see us fractured, when they see us unable to protect ourselves, when they see us unable to move in a cohesive direction, and they celebrate, they make jokes, they make memes, they celebrate our impotence, they celebrate their supposed domination over us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala show us a day where they no longer gloat. Allahumma ameen. These du'as are incredibly important, not, be, not just because du'a is the weapon of the believer, greater than any other weapon or tool that we have, but because they help us calibrate and they help us think about, well, what is a misfortune that will do that to me? What is an enemy that should be defined that way? And so first and foremost, who is your enemy? And I'll tell you that if you're a sincere Muslim, and I assume that of every brother or sister that walks through the masjid doors, then may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for your sincerity. And I ask Allah to guide you and to guide me to the best course of action. You're not my enemy even if I think very differently from you, period. A Muslim is a Muslim, you are not my enemy. I do not think of you as an enemy, nor should we think of each other as enemies because of battle lines that are not the ones that we take from the Quran and the Sunnah being drawn between us. We don't do that in our community. No matter how much we disagree, no matter how severe and real those disagreements become, even if a person is a sinful Muslim, you're a Muslim, you're not my enemy. So I start with that. Your enemy, is not your brother or sister who's trying to figure out what to do with this all. Your enemy is the system of evil that forces you to try to guess who's going to genocide less, who's going to oppress less, who's going to kill less Muslims. That's what your enemy is. Your enemy is that evil. But in that process, anyone who tries to sanitize or downplay the evil of any party or any politician that has the blood of your brothers and sisters on their hands needs to do some soul searching. So there's a difference between trying to calculate in the midst of an evil, a great evil that can be overwhelming with sincerity and sanitizing that very evil. Those are two very different things. In whatever calculation you're making, the worst human rights atrocity of our lifetimes playing out on our screens has to be the number one factor of that calculation. It starts with that. We're not the people of Gaza's bad, but so are our groceries. Nor are we the people that insult Palestinians or use the word Palestinian as an insult. Because there is no greater honor right now than standing with the most honored people on earth, and those are the Palestinians that are fighting this cruel beast right now. So we're, we're not those people. And when we make our calculations, we have to make sure that we are operating with sincerity to our cause as an ummah, no matter what that is. And I want us all to recognize that while we're glued to our screens on Tuesday night, seeing a percentage move this way or a percentage move that way, and seeing this political football, I want you to understand that at that very moment, your brothers and sisters in Gaza and Lebanon will be looking to the skies to see if there is a movement of an American bomb, some of them manufactured by General Dynamics here in Dallas that's going to fall on them in that moment. 
they're not looking at things the way that you're looking at things. And that's your brother, that's your sister. And that has to be the number one concern that is on your heart and your mind at all times. But what if in that calculation, we get this wrong? What if we don't take the right course of action as a community, even with the right intentions and even with the right mechanics to arrive at the right goal? What if we get this wrong? Not just in regards to our vote, by the way, a vote for anyone or not voting at all, not just in regards to that, but in regards to anything, in regards to our strategies, sincere strategies through ikhlas, through shura, through, through deeply contemplating the sunnah together, which is the sunnah, to try to figure things out as a collective community. What if we get things wrong in our lives? I want you to ponder this hadith. And subhanAllah, it's a powerful hadith. And I don't want to lose the context because sometimes we can be highly dishonest if we speak of a hadith like this without situating it in the context. This hadith is talking about Badr or Uhud, a person that has been in charge with holding an arrow, an archer who has to watch the backs of the Muslims and has direct orders from the Prophet to protect themselves against an evil tyrant. It is talking about that context, but there's something deeply profound that the Prophet shared with the archers and some of the scholars say that this was before the Battle of Uhud because of the tarkiz, because of the focus that the Prophet ﷺ had on that small group of people. And by the way, subhanAllah, in that is deeply profound that it was a group of 50 that were the key strategy of the rest of the ummah in this situation. And when 40 of those 50 disobeyed, it changed the entire dynamics of that battle. So think about the Prophet ﷺ speaking to you and you're one of those archers, whether it's the Battle of Badr or the Battle of Uhud. And Amr ibn Abbas says, سَمِعْتُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَمَ يَقُولُ I heard the Prophet ﷺ say, مَنْ رَمَ الْعَدُوَ بِسَهْمٍ فَبَلَغَ سَهْمُهُ الْعَدُوْ أَصَابَ أَوْ أَخْطَأَ فَيَعْدِلُ رَقَبَةً The Prophet ﷺ said, whoever shoots an arrow, whether that arrow hits its target or misses its target, that arrow will be equivalent to the reward of freeing a person from slavery. SubhanAllah, think about that, that message, how that resonates, what that says to a person. Look, you're in this situation, you're shooting your arrows. And to be clear, because I know how our khutbahs get taken out of context, I'm not suggesting that you shoot an actual arrow or shoot anything else at anybody else. Stick to the spirit of the hadith, please. What the Prophet ﷺ is putting in their minds, you're going to shoot and sometimes you're going to miss. You're going to strategize and sometimes your strategy will fall apart. You're going to make determinations and sometimes those determinations are going to be dead wrong even if everyone around you says they are absolutely right. It's going to happen. And in this situation, in such a clear and pure situation, Prophet ﷺ is saying, look, whether it misses or not, You've just freed yourself from hellfire. Because the reward of freeing a person from slavery is freeing yourself from hellfire. As the Prophet ﷺ said, limb by limb, if you free a person from slavery, you free yourself from hellfire. So do your part. Not just tawakkal ala Allah. Don't sit there and beat yourself up too much over the missed arrow, over the missed target. It's about the spirit. It's about who you are when you assume that position. It's about you calibrating with sincerity and with clarity. It's about you trying to make sure that you take the right decision. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to a sawab, guide us to that which is right in all of our affairs. And with that, I want to leave you with five things bi ta'ala as we go into this Tuesday. Number one, the definition of our community needs to change to include our global community to speak of American Muslims as if what they do only affects them or that their interests are to be spoken about in isolation is a flagrant violation of the concept of an ummah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa It's number one. Number two, when you're a part of that community, when you're a part of my community, you're a part of my community no matter how much I disagree with you. And so your sanctity as a Muslim, in your honor, in your dignity, is still just as sacred as any other moment in our existence. So I still love you even when I'm mad at you and I hope that we get to Jannah together. That's the spirit of a community 
inside, outside. Number three, don't ever throw your community under the bus or think that you're better than your community. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا لَقُوا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا قَالُوا إِنَّا مَعْكُمْ or, or when they're with the believers, they say that we're with you. وَإِذَا خَلَوْا إِلَىٰ شَيَاطِينِهِمْ And when they're with their devils, they say, no, we're with you. إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ مُسْتَهْزِئُونَ We're just making fun of them. We're just, you know, shooing them around. Don't ever speak to anyone outside of this community as if you're not a part of it. It's your community. Don't ever throw your community under the bus. And you know what that means post-election? If a pro-genocide candidate from any party loses an election or loses a race, don't come back and yell at the Muslims. Yell at the candidate that lost their morality and lost the Muslim vote in the process. Don't yell at the community and say the community's fault, the community's fault, the community's fault. Absolutely not. We're a community of clarity. Number four, staying focused on our common enemy and fighting the common evil that we've all been seeing means staying focused on the beast in its entirety and striving to the best of our ability to tame that beast in its entirety. That doesn't happen through a vote in isolation, especially if that vote is taken in the spirit of insecurity. We have to act with confidence, sincerity, and a sense of security. Number five, Allah is always in charge. He's in charge on November 4th. He's in charge on November 5th. He's in charge on November 6th. You get the point. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always in charge. No one who Allah befriends will be humiliated. No one who Allah takes as an enemy will be honored. Therefore, we cannot seek power or dignity through any candidate. We seek it through our Creator alone. And we act with a sense of confidence in that process. Alhamdulillah. Whatever Allah throws our way, there is an opportunity for us individually and as a community to internalize that and to find our path back to Jannah bi idnillahi ta'ala. May Allah guide us to what's right. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide our intentions. May Allah guide our thinking. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide our strategies. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide our deeds. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us as a community to be a pillar of strength for the rest of the ummah and not to be a pillar of weakness and not to be a pillar that forgets the rest of the house. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us, guide our children, guide our future generations. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide our neighbors and guide all of those around us to that which is best and that which is most pleasing to Him. Allahumma ameen.